Watch that first step. It's a doozy. Oh, yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> All right. Come on in. Do you want to go in front of me or you want me to follow? I'll right, follow ahead. you along. All right. So this is the beautiful strength bus, also known as Atticus the bus. Um, I originally had it as Atticus on Instagram, but then I went to tiny home festivals and people were like, it's Atticus, it's Atticus. And they didn't, they didn't know that it was a nonprofit. So I wanted it to be like, oh, it's the beautiful strength bus, but it's still named Atticus. So right. I named it Atticus. Um, so the project that I do is all about empowerment and I take photos. Um, so our mission statement is celebrating the resilience of the human spirit through the power of conversation and photography. That's a lot to say. Uh, but the Atticus name comes from To Kill a Mockingbird. So you never really know somebody till you walk around in their shoes. And this project is kind of that, like you never know somebody till you have a conversation with them. So I named it that. It's a pink glittery bus and it has a boy's name. It is totally confident in its sexuality. <laughs> so I've started building it in September. I bought it in September of 2019 and then started gutting it. Um, uh, at the end of 2019 and then I had a power steering issue so that was a lovely $3,000 fix and then in March of 2020 is when I got it back and the world fell apart <laughs> but it gave me the time to be able to build it like this is a miracle bus like it is it's in incredible that this is like even a thing because when I bought the bus I had like $500 in my account and I kept thinking about it and I'm like I'm just gonna put it on a credit card I'm like that's not responsible but I'm gonna do it anyway and when I went to go buy it the guy offered to hold it for me for a few months and I shot two weddings did like two senior se sessions and I went back and paid cash for it and then as I was driving it home I had no idea where I was gonna even park it and a friend of mine messaged me and said hey you can park it at my my business and then I'll help you gut it and then after that when all the Airbnbs well I had a guy that helped me move the wheelchair ramp from the back to the middle um, in Nashville. And then when all the Airbnbs and stuff closed, I had friends in Georgia that said, hey, why don't you come down here? We'll kind of give you a little bit of guidance to be able to build stuff out. And then when I was ready to do the cabinets, I found two different cabinet people. So I did a lot of it, but I didn't do like, I designed it all. I wrote it in a book before I even had a bus. So the, having it 3D come to life or 4D, I guess it is, um, when it's were, pretty incredible. When were you in Georgia? I was in Georgia from April of 2020 to July. So in Canton, Georgia okay. at Splendor Oaks. I had left Georgia in January. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we missed each other. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... Um, I think that's what I've been following you. Since Georgia? Well, since whenever you started posting stuff. Oh, okay. And... Uh, so I remember watching the, the gutting and all just along the way. Did you watch me cry often? <laughs> I, f I feel I like I'm a pretty... that out, but... And I blacked it out. That's a PTSD thing is like there. I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to build another bus. I would design them all day. But the actual, like, when people buy buses or conversions of any kind, I don't know if they realize how much actually goes into them. Because I didn't. I just was like, oh, this can't be that difficult. And it is because you have to be, you have to do electric, you have to do plumbing, you have to do building, you have to do carpentry, all the things all at once. And then, I mean, obviously if people have done this more than once, they know that. But as a newbie to the thing, and I bought a full-size bus too. I didn't get like a, a shorty or, um, from what I'm doing, I really wanted to have a big bus. Sure. And then that, that means you have to also learn to drive the big bus, <laughs> which is a whole different thing in itself. Um, but yeah, just to show you, so here's the kitchen. Uh, I have the kitchens actually done, which is nice. Um, minus the fact that I don't have power when I don't, when I'm not hooked up to a generator. Like right now I'm running off a generator because I was plugged into power and then I got like FOMO, like people are having fun over here without me. <laughs> so I moved <laughs> over. This was like, if you ever go to a tiny home festival, you gotta be in the field. It's so much more fun. Um, but all my drawers, they lock. So I put child locks on them. So when I'm driving, they don't open up. When I'm parked somewhere, I undo them. So is that, that a magnetic? Annoying. It is, it's just like a, it's a kid lock. Right, so yeah. Like I just tried those, those, not this particular kind. Yeah. And mine all broke. <laughs> oh, they did? This one? I well, don't know I've got a lot here. of heavy tools and things that bind against them, but... This is a different style. So half my cupboards were done by one person, and half of them were done by another person. So this clamps in there. 
Yeah. Um, my bathroom isn't fully done yet. I did do a, more of a rugged um, barn style door. Sure. So I have a composting toilet, but my bathroom itself isn't isn't finished. Uh, so I have a shower outside, and then I do Planet Fitness, and I do like friends and family, and where I just don't shower for three days like I <laughs> like I am currently. <laughs> That's why you open windows when you dry. Like, you, I smell you so air great. Out. Um, this one, so then I, since I'm using it as a photo studio, I wanted to have a vanity, like, so if I do somebody's hair and makeup, um, everything in here kind of has multiple purposes. So this would be where I could have hair and makeup done, but it's also my vanity too. So all of my like shower stuff. Oh, Hey, this is what happens when you drive a bus. It's like an earthquake every day. Um, so all shower stuff, makeup, hair, towels, stuff that I rarely use on the road. Uh, is in there and then this side this pops up the other side pops up for a desk so i turned old lockers into a bench i flipped those over and put um put wheels on the bottom and then just a little bench there so that can move anywhere in here if i need it to but it also has storage so there's like a sewing machine and actually i've never even used a sewing machine but it's in there and then this can fold down. Usually when I drive, I fold that down. Or if I have people in here and they need a place to sit, I fold that down. So this um, is a, it actually folds out to a full size bed. Dan, uh, Dan Messenek did a bunch of this stuff for me. He, uh, he's, he used to be the banana van and now he's, I think just Dan Messenek on Instagram. But he actually, I drew this out. I wanted something that had, that was big enough to have backdrops in it but then also store clothes. But I, even though I live by myself, I travel by myself, that may not be the case forever. Or if I ever sold it, which I can't even imagine doing it, but yeah. I wanted it to, or like my nieces and nephews and stuff travel. Well, I'll sell mine if somebody comes with a if big enough. If somebody tells me they got the big exact enough. amount of money, I'll yeah. rebuild this exact same thing. They've got a big enough pile of money, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they check. Uh, so this folds out, but I can't remember exactly how to do it because there's a magnet on one side <laughs> But it comes to a full-size bed and then I just can put an air mattress on it And then I also put hammock hooks all through the uh. throughout so you can I can actually sleep seven in here if I needed to and Then this is a hot mess um, <laughs> I really wanted to have a wheelchair ramp like that was one of the main things on the bus I wanted a wheelchair ramp and then the taller Thomas buses uh, so this was in the back and we cut it and moved it to here. Uh, it took about five days to do this project. And then, so like one of the very first interviews and stuff that I did was a, was a guy that was in a wheelchair and it was so cool to be able to like show up, put it down. Cause like a lot of people that go to tiny home festivals and stuff, they can't get in and tour buses because most people take it out because it's an epic view with a door. I had mine because my late wife was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm and she never got to live in the bus she passed away before it was done oh, sorry. and i had that lift until this past spring yeah and i went we fritz and i started messing with it and it started spewing hydraulic fluid and went oh no just take it out yeah. it's not worth fixing so yeah i had a guy i took this to a bus um uh repair center because it wasn't working and then the guy was like, oh, your bearings are out and it's like an $8,000 fix or try to find somebody. And I was like devastated because a week later was when I was going to interview that guy. And um, I don't know if you know Ricky Irvin, but he's amazing. He's at a lot of tiny home festivals in like the southern uh, southern states. He was at the Georgia Tiny Home Festival and he took a look at it and it wasn't for him plugged into the battery and then it wasn't connected. So um, yeah, he fixed it for me, mm -hmm. which was awesome. Good. And then I just use it as storage and stuff too. Uh, I don't play guitar, but I look like I play guitar. I bring guitars along for other people. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else? And then I used, I used um, toolboxes a lot. Yeah. So these are cool because you can lock them and most of the time things stay locked. So I have like one big like bus check before I move anywhere. Like just going from the, across the campground to here, I had to move a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I forgot to block a couple of my drawers when I left. Indiana to come up here. Oh yeah. I heard this boom, <laughs> pull over, pull over the side of the road. Yeah. Do what I gotta do. Yeah. Every, I mean, it's like an earthquake in here every day. And if you don't have it bolted yeah. down or everything yeah. in here that you see is on industrial um, Velcro or sure. like a really strong double stick tape. So yeah. even this stuff, I mean, it's like stuck, stuck down. 
So this is gonna create, uh, so this is my studio space, but before I take your picture, I'll show you where I sleep. So this wall, folds down. and oh, this is how I break things, and this is how I broke my computer to begin with. <laughs> so it folds down, and I made it to where it was high enough. I didn't make that again. Dan did that to me. I designed it so I could see out. So like I just stayed at the Badlands, and I woke up to this like awesome sunrise just overlooking the Badlands. Um, and I don't have sheets and stuff on it right now because I took them off to wash them and then never actually did it. So, and I had a friend from Nashville paint. I told her, I was like, I want to feel like I'm in a, a really cool sunset, like all the time. And the rest yep. of the bus is all black and white. So it was kind of cool to just have this like awesome amount of color behind sure. there. And then it flips up. And then I put a chair right there. And I turn on this flash, and then I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> sure. All right, come on in. And you'll probably get it blown out there for a second. Is there anything I'm not covering that you want me to cover? No, I think you covered everything. Okay, cool. All right, go ahead and have a seat. I'm gonna take your picture, it's gonna send it to this iPad, and then you're gonna write about yourself <laughs> on the iPad. <laughs> I, know. I have no idea what to say. What are some things that describe you to yourself? Or like words that you use, or the way that you would like the world to see you? Crazy old hippie. Perfect. Yeah, cause okay. it's true. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna get it like this, and I haven't done, tested the light. Oh, helps if I have it on. What's happening? I thought I'm bring my top hat over, but I didn't. <gasps> Do you want to get it? I could, or not. I know I had to ever wear it. Oh no. Okay. Well, then we will have you. As if you is. watch my videos and you see me wearing a short top hat, yeah, that's it's because I'm doing something about the Civil War. Oh, nice. It's okay. just sort of the clue I give people. So. <laughs> All right, three, two, one, smile. Let us see. Yes. Oh my God, your beard is amazing. It's like super simple. It's like one, one shot. And then I will hand this to you. And I will step on it. We got a little wild last night in here. Oh, come on. This is also why I really wanted my computer back so then we're gonna... okay. well thank you for the tour <laughs> thanks and i hope you really loved my bus um the next time that i see you i hope to have solar and i hope to have a bathroom <laughs> well we'll i'll do an update video if we do yes and if people want to see how the picture she took of me came out i think you're gonna have to go on instagram instagram or beautifulstrength.org there you it go. will be on there as well. <gasps> Look Thank at this. You. Thank you. Oh, cool. I'm not going to let you see. Oh. Hey, this bus looks familiar. Let's see if anybody's home. Oh, hey. It's been hey. about six months since I've seen you up in the UP, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, yep. I've changed a few things. It was a little, gre little greener up there. A little greener, no kidding, and more humidity. It's a little dirty, a little dusty, and... It's a desert. I, it is a <laughs> desert, and I am on, like, day three of desert -ness But, um, I have a bathroom now. Like, how cool is that? Actually, I'll switch places with you, and I'll turn the light on so you can actually see it. Oh, you know how to use that GoPro handle thingy. Yeah, I think, yeah. Well, I have that same one in it. Best I saw you, it was a dream. Uh, yeah, last you saw it was a closet. It did have a toilet <laughs> in here, and so I'd have to like haul everything out. It's still, I still use it a lot for storage. So like I have a cooler and my laundry every, and stuff goes every in there. Every Nomad shower is a yeah. storage until shower time. Until so. you have to shower, then you gotta pull out. Now, yeah. technically these aren't in place yet. <laughs> I just, I went through like six different things of knobs 
trying to find the knobs that fit on that. And then I finally, on my way up on Friday, I found the right ones at a Home Depot and I grabbed them and I was like, I'm gonna put those in place. So it does actually produce water. I just have to seal those, which I'm gonna be doing this afternoon. Sure. So, but look at it, it is actually done. And I have an nice. idea to change it into a photo booth if I can make that happen. <laughs> I think it'd be really funny to That'd have people in here and then like the ones you know at the fair that print out oh yeah no, and i have a friend all who the does weddings them. and things mm -hmm. that they have that kind of stuff yeah going on. i have a friend who does them and i was like oh my god that'd be really funny i don't know if i'll ever do it it took me even if you just put the back. name on the door said photo booth yeah i know, think it would be really cool. pri private selfie sh photos mm -hmm. it's like yeah and then they'd have to sit on my toilet. Yeah, they're sitting on the toilet <laughs> taking a, sh a selfie. Yeah, that's but not they too can't weird. Be in my no, won't let that happen. So this is the one thing that's changed, and most everything else has been the same, with the exception of I have probably photographed like 300 more people in here since I saw you last. <laughs> yeah, right. But I did also get a diesel heater, which yeah. um, that's a game changer. I'm probably going to order another one just to have a spare, because I broke it the first time I used it. Yeah, um, uh, I'm on my third. Oh, yeah. okay. In three years. I so. mean, they're 175 bucks. What can you expect that they're yeah. going to be like super, super high quality? But that, the first one, so biggest note to self is watch the video the entirety before you install it. Um, because yeah. I only watched it in pieces as I was installing it. And then I um, blew up my first one. So, now if I remember, you better. put your fuel tank on the, on the door. My fuel tank is on the door, which yeah, some so people told me not to do yeah, because yeah. it was inside and you'd smell it. But honestly, I don't smell it any more than I smell like regular diesel or whatever. Right. Um, I do have the pump on the inside. Everything is on the inside, uh, which eventually I want to turn this into a dinette. And so I would actually enclose that and then I wouldn't hear it as much anyway but it went on the lower hertz setting, it doesn't really pump as much. Like the first night I had it, it was like, doo, doo, doo. and I'm like, whoa, this is yeah. gonna take some time to get used to. But well, uh, well, we it's all, lesser now. If you got a noise that's constant, your brain eventually goes, that's not dangerous, we ignore right, it. Right, right. So. so now it's not anything big. Um, it wasn't exactly fun to uninstall and then install again, but it was way easier to install than I thought. When you get that box, you're kind of intimidated because it has like 500 pieces in it. And yep. then you really only use like a quarter of them. <laughs> uh, so I mean, it. Yeah, you know, the was last one I bought actually had a uh, pickup tube, where you could drill into your main tank, and drop yeah. the, drop the tube down in. So I guess you can do that with all of them. I didn't tap into my tank. I don't. I don't feel confident enough in the mechanics of the bus to do like anything external or where right. I know like that stuff. But when it's um when it's the uh like actually having to do something into the gas which i don't think it's actually that hard to do because no. as long as you float it if you don't float it and you sink it then you could drain your gas right. but if you float yeah it, this you this tube was quite long so i mm -hmm. figured you could take and it was bent in a u-shape so you had to straighten it out to whatever level tank mine i had a um three quarter inch uh plug in the top so I fabricated something that stays four inches off the bottom and yeah. Yeah. I can't run I'll myself, I can't strand again. myself. Right. I could get close, but. That's the bigger thing, don't strand yourself because that would suck. Well, that leaves me about 15 <laughs> gallons that I usually am close enough to, I don't let it get that far down. I never but. go under a uh, half a tank if I can. It more, it's mostly for sticker shock, like it, sticker yeah, shock. Yeah, it hurts enough. Gas. Whereas if I, I have gotten down to a quarter tank of gas before and then that was just like. Well, my fuel up. gauge is off enough that it, when it hits empty, mm -hmm. I still got about 30 gallons in the tank. Oh, so when it hits empty, I start getting nervous just because the fuel gauge says empty and maybe oh. it's right this time. Okay. But, as far yeah. as I know, my fuel gauge is correct. Yeah. But I guess I'd, I've never really, I've never it's let home, it get low. So well, I don't know. It's, it's empty and I put in 30 gallons and it's a 60 gallon tank. So. Yeah. But I'm always, did I mess up on the math when I figured out the size of the tank? Right. I don't even know. I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm either 60 or 80. Yeah. I don't even know what I am. Most I ever put in mine was 40. That hurt. Uh, <laughs> that yeah. really hurt. That would so. be fun. I would but, definitely all right. Know well, that. thanks for the update. Uh, and uh, yeah! maybe I'll see you in another, another spot later down. Yeah. What are you going to do next? Uh, well, I'm hanging around here for a while. And then I'm going, eventually I'll go to the school of UP. 
Oh, know, okay. And, you know. I don't know if I'll make that this year because I'm going to try to go to Alaska. Well, I've got, I was thinking Alaska, but I don't. I can't afford it. I can't afford it right now either. But if I just keep saying that I'm going there, it'll just happen, and I'll just get yeah. there. Because that's how I've gotten well, here and everywhere else. Yeah, I've got a, <laughs> a grandson in New York that I took on an ice cream tour this past summer. Oh, that's funny. That's what changed. And now I'm taking him to Maine next summer. So by the time this is is up. I'll have already taken him to Maine. Yeah. So I really want to go no. to. Yeah, it'll be right Northeast. after your your this video okay. is up. I'll be taking him to Maine. So. So cool. I want to go to the Northeast all next summer and then flip it and then go up to Alaska. But whether yep. or not I can make all that happen, we'll see. I really want to hit all fifty states well, before the end of the year. People. It's twenty nine. We'll try following your travels. All right. right. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the tour of that latest rig. I will have a new one next Saturday. Uh, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified. Just make sure you don't miss them. Uh, lots of uh, cool rigs coming up this year. See you down the road, my friends. Stay safe.